Hello, it's Andy, and in this video, we are going to study Silent Lucidity by Queensryche. This is one of my favorite kind of metal ballads. All right, so you'll notice that at the beginning, when he plays the intro, there's kind of a push beat that I'm going to show you where he comes in a little early. He actually comes in on the and, or I'm sorry, the uh of four in each measure. But during the verses, when the singer is singing the first verse, he doesn't do that. He just plays on the downbeat. So let's ex let's start by explaining that. Okay, so during the first verse, you hear in the, the bass line, it's not very low, but it's still a bass line, you hear one, 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 one. You should practice that because that's just the most basic part when he's singing the first verse, the first note of every measure, okay? So in context of the music, it sounds like one, 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 one. Okay, and the counting, if I count every 16th note, whew, it's going to be sort of a chore, and I'm going to do my best, but here it goes. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. Whew, that's kind of hard to do. Okay, but you could just say one E. Or you could say tick tick, like there's two sixteenth notes, right? So tick tick. Tick tick. Tick tick. Tick tick. Tick tick. Okay, so there's two sixteenth notes in that first beat of every measure. When he plays that bass note, he's holding it for, it's actually an eighth note, you know? It's twice as long as a sixteenth note. And you have to hold that note. It always comes in on count one. So let's try that with a metronome. Here's the metronome set to sixteenth notes, okay? So every click of the metronome is a note on the guitar. Remember, the first note of every measure is two clicks, right? Here it goes. One, two, ready, go. Okay, so the first verse has downbeats. Now what happens in the intro? What is he doing that's different there? So he does start the song on a downbeat. But when he gets to this part, the bass note does not come in on count one. It comes in one sixteenth note earlier than that on the uh of four, okay? And then, guess what? On count one, he doesn't play any notes at all. So, he's missing the downbeat of the measure on purpose. So the counting is one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E. And then when he 
repeats the riff and goes back to the fifth fret, he does start on the downbeat. So it looks like he's starting every four measures on the downbeat, but for the next three measures, he kind of comes in early, and that's a little bit confusing. Let's hear how that sounds with our 16th note metronome. One, two, ready, go. with the metronome set to 60. So the metronome is ticking at quarter notes, okay? And so let's try the intro. One, two, three, four. first verse. Here we go. One, two, three, four. slow it down a little bit. So now I'm going to switch the metronome to eighth notes at 90. And so we're going to play it a little slower. Let's start with the intro. Two, three, four. first verse. One, two, three, four. to the next section. The next section sounds like this. section, what he plays is a unison G. So open string G and fifth fret G played together at the same time, and you get 
doubling of the same note. That's called a unison. Now, in the next section, we have what's called the re-intro, and in the re-intro, he plays the intro again. And he has a little pickup note that gets us into the intro again. Let's learn that. Okay, so he plays open string D, hammer on fret 2, like that, then play open G, and let it ring, okay? So it sounds like this. You could leave your finger on the second fret and let the notes ring together, but you have to immediately, remember, jump into the intro, and the first note is fifth fret. So you're going to need to jump to the fifth fret, okay? So I usually don't try to slide along the string there. I don't really slide it. Instead, I pick it up so that I make sure that I can clear that G string as I set my finger down because you don't want to interrupt the ringing of the G string. Make sure it's ringing. Set up the intro so it all rings together. You don't want an interruption of the ringing G string at that moment. Because here's that unison again. So he's landing on a unison. And that makes this part sound really full. Now let's play the second verse. And here he plays something similar to the intro, except it's an octave lower. So let's hear how that sounds. Sounds like this, one, two, three, four. move on to the solo. So if you're in a band, you can rock the solo while everyone else plays the chords. But the question is, what are those chords? There's so much orchestra happening in this piece, and it's really hard to tell with all those um, talking sound effects and samples what's going on. And so I'm going to show you how to play the whole solo section all with power chords. Okay, so these are all what we call five chords, or in other words, you're just using the root and the fifth. That's all you need. Everything in the solo is a power chord. Okay, so it's not so much major chords or minor chords, but power chords, okay? So here we go. So during the solo, he plays an E flat power chord, which is a sixth fret power chord on the A string. Then a C power chord, that's third fret power chord on the A string, also for two measures. Then we're going to repeat that section, so another E flat power chord, make sure you do two measures. And then, this time though, when you go to your C power chord, only one measure this time, that's different. Then we're going to move on and we're going to go to B flat, so that's 1st fret power chord on the A string. Next we have a A flat power chord, so that's 4th fret on the low string. Then there's a G power chord, so that's 3rd fret on the low string. Then we have an F power chord, 1st fret on the low string. And then we're back to the E flat chord, which we played earlier, 6th fret on the A string, and then we're going to march it down. So 5th fret is a D, 3rd fret is a C, 1st fret's a B flat, hey we're revisiting some of these notes we just played, 4th fret on the low string is A flat, 
and then it ends on a G, third fret. And then bam, we're back into the last verse of the song. Okay, now let's play all the power chords in the solo section of the tune. Here we go. Three, four. That's about it on this song because at the end of the song you just hear the intro again. And this time he's playing all the root notes on the downbeats so you don't have to worry about all those push beats and anticipations that we studied at the beginning. Thanks for watching the Silent Lucidity video. Please like and subscribe and hit the bell if you're a new subscriber and I'll see you in the next video.